Hey Cedric here. Just want to talk about some of the uses for rope because I make my own rope. Super exciting stuff. And and like that. Just go ahead and put this stuff over here. Got kind of a little mess going on. Well today when you know I broke my foot a few weeks ago, blah blah blah. But I'm just getting back to pulling the wagon. And today hustling to get out of here, you know, as the internet had been down, phones messed up, all kinds of stuff. So, got out of here and I forgot my harness for towing. And that's a 150 pound wagon, you know. I can't pull that over any kind of terrain for very long using a hand, you know, because I've got my dogs and I've got to keep things going. So, I've been carrying my personal coral snake rope the same one that I did the the testing video I was bouncing on it, hanging from it, you know having a good time so I use this and this is a pretty useful configuration for whatever rope you might uh, you might have because maybe you need to drag a litter or a travois travoy uh, you know, you, maybe you need to pull someone out of the woods and you're not going to be able to make very much headway if you're having to use your hands for that, you wear yourself out a lot quicker, you know. Our shoulders are made to bear weight for long, long distances. So, we're to coil this up fast because I'm trying to keep the dogs from getting into mischief and everything. So, I have my rope. And how I did this, I doubled it up. because this is the, the length that I've got. I'm not going to cut this out there just for that. It wasn't like a real emergency. But it could have been. Then I doubled it again because this would take it to an approximate usable length for me. So I then pass this through my uh, steel ring that I've got on the on the wagon for hooking to, hooking my harness to. I passed this through it and I knotted this off at this end. Just a real, real simple half a gram on knot or half hitch I think that's called. Now that's passed through. I went ahead then and just hooked myself into it like so. over my shoulders and I don't even know right now if the camera's looking at me man it doesn't look like it is always with the camera me so now I had this through that steel ring and I was able to pull them pull the wagon boom super simple this I put over the straps on the pack and super easy you can drag a large amount of weight that way without having to use your hands so that's just another use of rope. We don't think about all the uses of a good rope. I mean, even this small rope, you know, quadrupled up like this, can pull a car out of a ditch with a good rope. You know, this is something that I think is a underused item in the EDC. It's just always having some kind of emergency cordage or rope. So, well, that was my little experience today, and I just thought I'd share it with you. I really want to get out and mess around. My foot's feeling loads better. And I've been making uh, a bunch of rope. I just shipped out uh, one, two, three, four, five, five uh, different hanks today. One 50-footer and a bunch of 17, 18-footers. So... Sorry, hold on. So I shipped those out today. And I did some rope making yesterday. You got to scope these out. Um, you saw, I think I did a, a, a short video with the, sh uh, the chaparral. And now this is a silver sage. And I'll include some pictures that I took at the end of these out in some natural light. And these just... Uh, really really nice 
This one is with the uh, 85 pound nylon, white nylon, and then the 50 pound OD green mil spec number no. 5 cord and 75 pound uh, Kevlar, yellow Kevlar. And this is from my Shadow Guard series of camo, multi terrain camo. Alright, and this one is inspired by the, the way the, the sage looks in the moonlight. And like that. The idea of camouflage is to break up regular lines, to make a thing irregular. And that's what we're doing. Now, this one isn't any kind of camouflage. I just really, really, really like it. Alright? This is 1600 pound brake strength. It's the same size as paracord, maybe a tiny bit smaller, about one eighth inch. And this is made from some of that red uh, military surplus number no. five cord that I got, 50 pound, and also my 150 pound Kevlar. Check that out. Red and yellow, and I'm calling this the, uh, the desert sunrise. The yellows and reds of the, the morning sunrise. Super nice. And now this, these are three separate ropes here. Three separate cords. And this is my newest, newest uh, member of the Shadow Guard family. This one I'm calling the Mesquite. And this one is the OD Green, that, that mil spec number no. 5 cord, 50 pound. The green 100 pound Dyneema. And yellow. 76 pound Kevlar. These are just beauties. Real beauties. And I'm already forgetting the uh, the brake strength. Give me a second here. Because I, I got to do the math on it, same as everyone else. No, that's not you. I apologize. Give me just a second here. There it is. Yeah, 1,800 pound minimum brake strength. And that's based on the individual strands. Again, actual brake strength may be much higher. And these can be disassembled into the uh, all the different strands here. You've got 24 separate strands of high strength cord. And if you needed to, you could cut off this much. You know, secure the ends with a knot or whatever you have, some pitch. You know, if you roll some, uh, you know, just melt some pitch and you can roll it in there, that'll secure the ends pretty well. You cut that off and then take that apart, and you've got line for tying up a shelter, like that, and you've still got a nice length of rope. So, these ones are really beauty. And I'll, I'll include some pictures at the end, and I'll also just give you a little, little look-see here. really nice and these are 17 plus feet more like 18 and a half but I always list them lower than they actually are y'all already saw this bad puppy this is the urban camo and this is just beast 3600 pounds with the 300 pound specter and the gray and black or the gray Dyneema and the black nylon gray 100 pound Dyneema look at that beast it's just beefy. Awesome. Wicked. And here, and the, that one was about 60 feet. And this one here is another 60 footer, and this one's really beautiful. Now this one I'm calling the Desert Sunset because of the way, like the, uh, the red and the blue really combine and you get this purple effect. And this one's in the, just, just really, really awesome. I really like it. And it's got the uh, the Kevlar in there and everything. And this one has brake strength of boom, 2,160 pounds. Yeah, yeah, 2,160 pounds. 
This is made from the uh, 83 pound blue polyester, the red, the red government number five, 50 pound, and my um, uh, 150 pound Kevlar. Boom. This one's a really nice, really nice lay. All these ropes, really not well. So that's that's my rope. And oh, I also wanted to talk about care of your Kevlar. Okay, we have Kevlar, and now Kevlar is amazingly strong. Okay, stronger than steel by weight. It's highly abrasive, and it's also UV sensitive. And bleach will degrade it very quickly. Never use a bleach uh, product on your Kevlar. Okay? That's amazingly strong and as long as we take care of it then we won't have issues. If you're going to have your Kevlar in, in the sun for prolonged periods of time then you are going to want to take measures to protect your Kevlar. Okay? Now this can be done many different ways. Um, a Scotch Guard spray is one of your easier ways. A spar urethane is the best way, I think. Um, and also just simple wax. You can take a wax candle or a chunk of beeswax, whatever you might have, and just run your rope through it, alright? Say, I don't have my wax out, I'm not going to dig it out. You just run it through, okay? You can put your hand over it with a rag and pull it through on that wax and then turn it over and pull it back through okay super easy and then just work it with that cloth work it in and you can even warm it up you know hit the wax with a hair dryer make it easy on yourself you know as long as we do all these things and Kevlar is amazingly strong and the way that I put my hybrid ropes together um, we're able to mitigate the brittleness of Kevlar, okay? It has very low elongation, which means that when it is struck with a dynamic load, if that dynamic load exceeds, for even a moment, exceeds its brake strength, it'll snap. Whereas a more resilient cord like nylon will actually elongate. So if this was a bounce, all right? that made a 400 pound load hit with you know 4,000 pounds of pressure or force force and it snaps nylon will elongate and along that e that that elongation that whatever that length of elongation is that weight is lessening it's coming back more toward 400 so that nylon might survive it even though it's not not nearly as strong it's more durable in some ways and that's why I do the hybrids the way that I do because with the Kevlar in a matrix with nylon or or another cord like polyester that has a high elongation then it's gonna have a chance to not elongate but more like it's spiraled up in that weave so rather than just being straight and snapping, it has a chance to do more like like this throughout the the weave of nylon. It's gonna more stretch inside that weave rather than just instantly, like a braided cord or this cord by itself would be. Okay? And that's why I do them the way I do them. You're you're gonna mitigate the the weaknesses of that Kevlar and just make it that much better of a rope. So, care of your Kevlar. It's UV sensitive. Prolonged exposure in the sunlight weakens it. But it's also self-screening, okay? So you've got this, and it's not allowing the sunlight to hit anything but the outer layer. So the outer layer degrades, the inner layer is fine. You know, as long as this isn't just a thin, thin cord, then it's got it's got protection and self-screening. No bleach. Bleach big no-no. Okay? Um, beyond that, just Kevlar is super tough. Super duper tough. Um, 
Now again, if you're going to cut one of your ropes, a twisted rope, you'll want to secure both sides of the cut. I did a video on that, and you know, you can actually use pine pitch, like I said. You know, you'll have a lot of things on hand, and you can also whip it. And now, what a, a whip is, is this, all right? We're going to go ahead and put a whip on here. Say I want to make a loop on the end of my rope, all right? Without a knot, because knots weaken rope. This is just common knowledge. A whip is something that's this is actually pretty simple to do, okay? We're going to make a loop here, and then we're going to just swoop around. Give me a second here. be able to see which one there it is okay we're good we're just gonna loop this around and there are better videos on this out there but we'll go ahead and now I'm gonna come through that loop that I left myself okay and normally I would do a lot more wraps than this but this for the sake of gravity we'll just go ahead and keep it simple now what I want to do is pull that loop back through back through the wraps that I just made okay so I do that pull that through and now that that whip is going to give you a nice strong loop at the end now you can use that whip to secure the ends of your rope temporarily because a whip does not hold well on the slicker materials these man-made materials okay um, it holds good on on twines and cottons and stuff so it'll be a temporary hold, and you'll want to get yourself a, a better better hold somehow. All right. Now the Dyneema and nylon melts. You can melt those ends. Kevlar does not melt, but if you melt that end enough, then the the, the poly, the nylon, the Dyneema, it's going to grip that. Damn, I really got that loop in there. Um, it's going to grip that uh, that Kevlar. So melting it is good you know it's better than nothing super glue is my favorite uh, at the behest of my friend Trader Joe Joe I got some heat shrink ends but they're actually uh, not very feasible for use in rope making because I have to secure those ends while they're they're still hooked up to my apparatus so I'm not sure how I'll uh, be able to implement those uh, may maybe I'll uh, put those on if you request it. You know, I can take the tape off and put it on after. Maybe I'll do that by request. So anyway, that's pretty much all I got, you guys. I just been I just finished up the last class, so I've got a an AAS Associates of Applied Science in. Uh, in behavioral health sciences and it's kind of anticlimactic because I was supposed to finish a couple couple semesters ago so you know I don't know I don't know how I feel well I've got ropes coming out and cool stuff going on you guys so hope to, hope to stick with me I'll be picking a winner this weekend for the giveaway for the carbon fiber battle mace so if you haven't entered Get over to that video and enter. Get in to win it. Everybody's got a chance, alright? So, be good to yourselves, okay? Hold your heads up high. And remember that no matter what, okay, you have worth. You have value. You have value no matter how bad you may feel about yourself. As long as you're not one of those scumbag twists, okay? You know, that caveat is always in place. If you're a twist, you suck, you're scum, hope you die. Otherwise, you have worth, and you're awesome, okay? Keep your head up. Keep your head up. Tomorrow may be brighter, it may be darker. But just keep your head up, and eventually, 
it'll get better. Alright? I dig you. Live free and punch hard. I'll catch you later. Bye.